Hello everyone, Phil here doing another video. Now I warn you, this is gonna be a little bit dry, not much to look at, but if you're in the market for a Super Socket 7 uh, gaming PC and you're building one together and you're not sure what processor to go for, be it a K62, K62 Plus or maybe a K63 Plus, then this video is for you. So let's have a look what I'm gonna talk about. Um, I'm making the assumption that you're in the market for a SuperSocket 7 motherboard or you already have one. So SuperSocket 7 means it runs 100 megahertz frontside bus. You've got a couple of choices. Now I've covered uh, the slower Intel and uh, the MMX and the normal uh, Pentium in another video. I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the video if you wanna watch that video first. But this time we're gonna focus on the high end. So this is really to get the most out of the SuperSocket 7 uh, performance. So I'm gonna, choose, I'm gonna compare all these three chips, the K62, K62 Plus and the K63 Plus. I'm gonna clock them at 550 megahertz. That is basically um, as high as AMD was comfortable with clocking these processors. They did have a 570 megahertz K62 plus, but they actually had to uh, use a six times multiplier and lower the front side bus running at 95 megahertz. So even AMD was not able or comfortable to get 600 megahertz out of these chips. So neither, neither was I. So setting them all at 550 megahertz. The K62 and the K62 Plus, uh, I have 550 megahertz models. The K63 Plus is a 400 megahertz model, but it's a 1.6 voltage uh, model and it overclocks like crazy. So it was no problem um, clocking it to 550 megahertz. They all have unlocked multiplier. So you can change the multiplier uh, in software or through the motherboard jumpers. Okay, next I'm gonna also wanna investigate the impact of RAM. Now, SuperSocket 7 motherboards have motherboard cache, and depending on what chipset and what revision you have, um, only a certain amount of RAM will actually be cached by the motherboard cache. So I wanted to look into that topic and just see, uh, see well, what is the actual performance uh, impact. So I tested it with 128 megabyte, which is the maximum uh, amount of RAM that will be cached on the motherboard that I'm using. And then I used it with 512 megabyte, which is um, the maximum RAM that Windows 98 uh, supports. Also, uh, I read somewhere online that if you've got a K62 Plus or a K63 Plus, because they have on-chip uh, cache, that you actually might be getting better performance if you turn off the motherboard cache. So that's another thing I wanted to investigate. And lastly, I'll throw in another um, benchmark option in the mix. Not everyone has a SuperSocket 7 motherboard, but even if you've got a motherboard that only supports 66 megahertz, many of them actually support the AMD K63 Plus. And you might be thinking, well, how does that compare? If I only have a motherboard with 66 megahertz and I put in a K63 Plus, how much slower is it compared to a super socket board running at 100 megahertz front side bus? And I picked the K63 Plus 400 megahertz. Now, um, I'm really fond of that processor running at 1.6 voltage, huge overclocking potential. It runs, uh, it draws very little power. I mean, it's it's a, a processor that draws less than 10 watts and it can be had for 20 euros. There's a, uh, a seller on eBay. Now I have no affiliation with him. I don't know that person, but he's got a lot of these in stock and he sells them for 20 euros. So if you're looking for uh, a good source to buy that processor, I'll, I'll put in um, the link or picture in the video. Now there used to be another seller who, who he was selling K62 plus 570 chips and he had like over, over 1000 of them and you could you could give him an offer and he would usually take it but he kind of disappeared so bit of a shame so that leaves the K63 plus as, as my recommendation because I don't want to just tease you and then you don't have an option to actually get the stuff I'm talking about okay so let's have a, have a look at the system I used I'm using a Gigabyte GA5AX motherboard, the latest F4 BIOS. It's set to 100 MHz front side bus and the multiplier is set to 5.5, which gives you a clock speed of 550 MHz. Um, 
couple of benchmark runs, one with 128 megabyte of RAM, the other one with 512. I'm using a 3DFX Voodoo 3 3500, it's an AGB card, latest reference driver, um, a sound blaster AW64 Gold. So all the benchmarks were ran, uh, were run with sound. Windows 98 uh, SE is the operating system I chose and all the DOS benchmarks were run in MS-DOS mode and with XMS memory. Okay, let's look at some benchmarks. So here we got some MS-DOS benchmarks. Now if you're interested in replicating these benchmarks, I'll actually uh, put a link to my website where you can download all these benchmarks. You just need a boot disk and then um, run the benchmarks. It's got a, a menu and you can just follow the prompts and it's all, all automized, yeah? So here we got the processors. Blue is the K62, red is the K62+, green is the K63+, and the purple one is the K63+, running at 400 megahertz on a 66 megahertz front of bus. 3D Bench 2, PC Player Benchmark in VGA mode, Doom and Quake. And just gonna toggle between the three memory settings. So here we have 128 megabyte RAM, which is entirely cached by the motherboard cache. Then I've got the benchmarks with 512 megabyte of RAM, and then the motherboard cache disabled. And we can see what happens when we toggle between them. So most of the movement is with the K62, and that is to be expected. The K62 does not have any on-chip cache so the it is it is more affected by any anything to do with memory bandwidth and cache so it loses a, a little bit performance when you uh, install more memory than uh, the chipset can cache but it loses quite a bit when you actually turn off the level 2 cache altogether now all the games are still playable so it, it's not the end of the world but for example if you look at quake um, without the level 2 cache we're getting 61.7 frames whereas with the cache turned on and only having 120 megabyte of RAM we're getting almost 78 so there's quite a difference so if you've got the K62 you really want to keep the memory um, within the cacheable uh, amount whereas with the K62 Plus and the K63 Plus it doesn't really matter I mean you still want to turn on the motherboard cache so I think that's a bit of a myth um, because in the beginning of the video I said that I read somewhere that on, on the K62 Plus and K63 Plus if you uh, turn the motherboard, motherboard cache off that you actually get a performance boost. I wasn't able to confirm that, well at least not in DOS. Um, so best advice to just leave the motherboard cache on. But between having 128 megabyte of RAM and maxing it out, 512 megabyte of RAM for Windows 98 for example, uh, the mobile chips no difference so if you've got a k62 plus or 3 plus it doesn't really matter um, the on-chip cache takes care of business and makes everything uh, stay fast okay and let's have a look at the k6 3 plus running at 400 megahertz on a 66 megahertz front side bus it's trailing a little bit behind but it's all the games are still playable and once you have 512 megabyte of RAM we can actually see that the K6 3 Plus is pretty much on level with the K6 2 running at 550 megahertz and the higher front side bus apart from Doom. So Doom is a game that seems to favor uh, clock speed over cache but in all the other games um, so if you're building let's put it that way if you're building a machine with 512 megabyte of RAM um, you're probably better off with with the K63 Plus, even on the lower frequency and the lower front side bus, it'll still be better than the uh, K62. Okay, let's go and have a look at some Windows benchmarks. So, I ran the following benchmarks Forsaken, Quake 2, Unreal, Incoming, and Turok 2. Um, Forsaken is DirectX, Quake was OpenGL, Unreal is a Glide game, Incoming is DirectX and Tarok, Tarok 2 is also a glide game. And let's have a look what's happening here. Um, we can see that the K63 Plus running at 400 megahertz is quite competitive. It's pretty much on the level of the K62. Um, we can see a nice spread in four second going, going with the chips that have a cache. Um, here, there's not really much gain to be had. There's a little bit going from uh, no chip, uh, no onboard, on chip cache to 128 
but anymore it doesn't really give you any gain. Um, similar with Unreal, the KZ3 Plus goes a little bit further, but not much. Seems this this it seems that this game is more held back by the graph, graphics card than anything. Um, incoming, also slight improvements with the chips that have more cache, but not much. And the same goes for Tarok 2. Okay, let's have a look at the situation when we installing 512 megabyte of RAM. So let's flick back and forth between the two. We can see that performance suffers across the board. Um, so what I'm taking away from this is that Windows 98 games are more sensitive to uh, cache and cacheable uh, size on the chipset. So we're losing a bit of performance. The K62 probably loses the most. Um, but even the mo even the even the chips with uh, motherboard cache actually lose performance. You can see that uh, here. And with I think it's fair to say that the K63 Plus probably loses the least amount of performance because it's got the uh, most amount of motherboard cache. And what's up with the K63 Plus 400? Um, but yeah, here it's on the level of the K62. Here it's a little bit behind, here's a, a tiny bit behind, tiny bit behind, tiny bit behind. But if we go to 512, now it's ahead. Here it is ahead. There it's ahead, it's ahead, it's ahead, yeah. So it's just like with the uh, situation on Demos DOS. If you run if you've got a K63 Plus, even at the 66 MHz front end bus running at 400 MHz, it will still be faster than the K62. So once again. If you've got lots of RAM in your system, you want to have a, a K62 Plus or a K63 Plus. And I've got one more here with the motherboard cache disabled, and I can see very little difference. So in Windows, it seems that if that the motherboard cache, for some reason, does very little. It'll even the K62, which has no uh, on-board on-chip cache, is not affected very much at all. I mean, in four seconds it's losing a few frames, but otherwise, no big deal. Um, Tarek 2 is probably one game where the K62 loses the most. But yeah, that's quite interesting. I can't see anything that's gaining performance. Oh, there's one. If you look at the incoming score, that's actually going up a little bit. But look, although I, I benchmarked every uh, game twice and I took the average, that could just be um, a measuring error. I can't seem to find anything else worth. Oh, that's a little bit high too. Okay, so maybe maybe there's something, maybe there's some truth to that under Windows, that if you turn off the cache, that there's little impact or, or maybe even a small boost in certain uh, situations. But looking at this, if you've got lots of RAM in your, in your motherboard and you've got a, a mobile processor that, that has on-chip cache, it seems that the motherboard cache has very little to do. But keep in mind, results may vary. I'm using this particular motherboard with the ALI chipset. Yeah, if you've got something else, um, don't necessarily take all the conclusions uh, too hard. Your results might vary, so I recommend recommend that you might do your own little benchmarking session on your system. Um, but that's really it. So what do we what what can we take away from this? The K62 is very sensitive to uh, the cache and how much cacheable RAM there is. On the K62, you really want to have um, memory that does that. You, you don't want to have more memory than the cacheable amount. On the K62 Plus and the K63 Plus, doesn't matter. Go with whatever memory you want to put in. Go with 512 if you want for uh, a good Windows 98 system, no problem. And we had a look at the K6 Free Plus running at 400 megahertz on a 66 megahertz front side bus. Very good chip in a lot of situations, especially with lots of RAM. It's actually faster than the K6 II running on a 100 megahertz front side bus and a significantly higher clock speed of 550 uh, megahertz. So definitely a very good, good chip to have. So if I had to pick a chip, I would definitely go for that K63 Plus uh, from Germany, the 1.6 volt model uh, running at 400 megahertz. Um, it overclocks no problem, set the voltage to 2, 2.1, 2.2, and it should be doing 550 uh, without any dramas. Do some stability testing, of course. Worst case, you have to dial it back a, a, li a little bit. 
um, or you can run it at a, on a 100 megahertz fronted bus uh, with a 4x multiplier at 400 megahertz and then you'll be somewhere in between uh, the green green and the purple one for example here yeah. okay that's it hopefully this wasn't too boring um, I tried to keep it brief but it's a complex topic and there's lots to talk about and uh, rather talk a bit too much than and miss something out um, hit the like button subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so uh, spread the word I've got a website philscomputerlab.com uh, where I'm uh, putting various things uh, uh, to do with with old-school gaming and benchmarking and other things um, and all the YouTube videos I'm slowly gonna link them on the website as well so have a have a look at that and any comments any questions any feedback put it in the, in the comments uh, down below I'm always looking forward uh, to hearing from you.